Hey everyone, welcome back to Static Cardiology here on EMTV. I'll be giving you an ECG rhythm and a scenario. On the bottom of the screen, you'll see a timer for 1 minute and 30 seconds. This time closely resembles the average amount of time you'll want to be spending on each card during an actual National Registry exam. When the time is up, we'll do a scenario walkthrough and I'll give you my treatment. Enjoy the card and good luck. Three, two, one. Now I hope you weren't too thrown off that this was a pediatric scenario. Let's go ahead and take a look at lead 2 in a little bit closer detail to see if we can interpret this rhythm. So remember, with a 12 lead ECG, you're actually looking at a 10 second strip. So unless you're really good at math, we need to make this into a 6 second strip to count rate. The way I like to do this is to take two lead groupings, which are 2.5 seconds each, and then add five big boxes to make my six second strip. I'll count my R waves and get my rate. I'm counting 23 R waves, which gives us an approximate rate of 230 BPM. The next thing I'll do is try to identify any P waves. Now unfortunately, there is a lot of artifact and baseline wander in lead 2. So I will use leads V3 and V6 to help me identify these P waves in the R to R interval. The R to R interval here is very consistent, and I'm not seeing any sort of real definitive P wave between the R to R intervals. It's just sort of lumped into a large single amalgamous complex. My QRS is also very, very narrow. Because of the consistent R to R interval, the lack of a definitive difference between P and T wave and the narrow QRS, my diagnosis of this rhythm is going to be supraventricular tachycardia, or SVT. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other lead groupings to make sure there isn't anything more malignant going on. In my anterior lead grouping, I'm not seeing anything significant except for a little bit of ST segment depression. But this is easily attributed to a rate related ischemia due to this patient's significantly elevated heart rate. Let's move on to the inferior leads next. My inferior leads show a significant amount of artifact and baseline wander, but you can still make out the ST depression that we saw in the anterior leads that would be again related to this patient's significantly elevated heart rate. 
Let's go ahead and take a look at the lateral leads next. The lateral leads offer no additional information besides what we've already talked about. Now that we've identified the rhythm, let's go ahead and take a look at the scenario to see if we can't make the determination on how we need to treat this patient. You are dispatched to a local school for an eight-year-old male complaining of chest pain. He began complaining of pain after playing soccer and 911 was called because his pulse rate was found to be extremely rapid. The nurse denies any medical history or prescribed medications and denies any history of similar episodes in the past. Your patient is alert and oriented, lung sounds are clear to auscultation, and he denies any shortness of breath or dizziness. Your partner obtains the following vital signs. Blood pressure, 116 over 50, pulse, 222, respirations 26, SpO2 98% on room air, blood sugar 128, and a weight of 45 kilograms. You attach the monitor and obtain the ECG above. Now, success in static cardiology relies not just in identifying the rhythm correctly, but also providing appropriate treatment. The algorithm you choose for treatment is going to be dependent on patient stability. My criteria for the unstable patient is CHAD, which of course stands for cardiac insufficiency, hypotension, alteration in mental status, and dyspnea. Based on this patient's vital signs, presentation, and history, he meets none of the CHAD criteria. Although the rate is elevated, heart rate alone does not qualify an individual for instability. So my final diagnosis for static cardiology is a stable SVT. Let's go ahead and now move on to the treatment. I'll begin treatment just like I do for all my other cards by regurgitating the mantra, scene safe, BSI, IVO2 monitor. Now as this patient is stable, the next thing I will attempt to do is elicit a vagal maneuver. If this fails, I'll move on to pharmacological interventions. The first line medication and the gold standard in the treatment of SVT in all age groups is adenosine. Now as this patient is pediatric, weight-based dosing is applicable. The first dose of adenosine is going to be dosed at 0.1 mg per kg, which based on his weight of 45 kilos will come out to 4.5 mg, and this is given a rapid IV push. The second dose of adenosine is 0.2 mg per kilogram, which will come out to 9 mg rapid IV push. Generally speaking, in most cases of pediatric SVT, two doses of adenosine will convert the rhythm. However, if the rhythm persists, you have other alternatives available to you. Ricanamide is widely seen as a great secondary medication for pediatric SVT, and it is dosed at 10 to 15 milligrams per kilogram, or in this patient's case, 450 to 675 milligrams given IV over 30 minutes. Alternatively, verapamil can be given. Verapamil is a calcium channel blocker. The dosing here is 0.1 to 0.3 milligrams per kilogram, which works out to 4.5 to 10 milligrams. Why 10? Because 10 is the maximum single allowable dose. And remember, with pediatric weight-based dosing, you do not exceed adult doses. This is given IV over five minutes. Another alternative is Esmolol, which is a beta blocker, and this is given in doses of 100 to 500 micrograms per kilogram, which will work out to 4.5 to 22.5 milligrams, given IV over a minute. And then if all else fails, the last resort medication for pediatric SVT is amiodarone. This is dosed at five milligrams per kilogram, or in his case, 225 milligrams, given IV over 30 minutes. It is highly recommended that you attempt other medications before amiodarone is given. And finally, rapid transport. And that's it. If you enjoyed this card, please make sure to head over to my channel for more. And while you're there, make sure you check out my other playlists, Static Pharmacology, as well as Paramedic Pathophys. Thank you again for continuing to like and subscribe and support my channel. 
Until I see you next time, stay safe, keep washing your hands, have a good rest of your night.